Hi, this is uh, Dr. Sarah Siddiqui, and I'm here to, um, this is a pre-recorded video, and um, we're going to be talking about developmental milestones. All right, so um, yeah, so here we go. This is a great topic suggested um, by the Elwood Public Library, whom I wish to thank for um, allowing me to present these monthly um talks for everyone and again if you have any ideas or anything that you want to talk about please um let elwood public library know and um they will let me know uh so um the topic for today this evening is developmental milestones in children and why is it important and why do we like to discuss it um, first of all, disclosures. I have no disclosures to identify. This presentation does not represent any medical advice or medical advice that um, you uh, need to take. Um, please confirm with your regular medical provider to discuss specific health issues. And I'm not speaking on behalf of any particular entity or business. Um, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. So um, why is it important to detect delays in development in children? So this is gonna be from birth to five. I'm gonna go through some um, developmental milestones and when we should um, really be worried and what we look for as pediatricians, but we count on you doing as parents. Um, so in the US, one in six children, and this is from the cdc.gov website, and I will be going through some websites that are really helpful in um, helping you track your child's development. So one in six children aged three to 17 years have one or more developmental or behavioral disability. And many children may not be recognized until school age, by which time significant delays might have occurred and opportunities for treatment uh, may be missed. So there are some key ways that parents can support um, child development at home. So we want to respond to our children in a predictable way. We want to show warmth and sensitivity. We want to have routines and household rules. We want to speak um, very often with the children, uh, sharing books, speaking with them, and playing with them. So this is all very, very important. And I always tell um, my parents when they come in that we really rely on their history and they what they tell us um, about their child because we do spend some time in the exam room but it's not a long time so we really rely on um, what you um, have seen or heard or or or, or what you're concerned about um, so if you have a concern, please, please, please let your uh, healthcare provider know, um, speak, speak out, um, and do not wait. So this is a big um, CDC, actually, and the American Academy of Pediatrics have joined um, Ventures, and they have um, this really great platform that can be found on cdc.gov website, and I'm going to go through that. And this is really where a lot of the slides um, and the... Um, and the information on the slides have come from, but um, essentially don't wait, contact your child's doctor or healthcare provider, let um, your pediatrician or your provider know that you're concerned about your child's development, you're not sure, and they should look into it, they should um, let you know what you can do for help. We're gonna be going through some of that too. Okay. Um, and the other, um, the other point that I want to make is that developmental milestones vary. So there is like a range of time that each child meets specific criteria, but there are within the age ranges, there are certain things that we do look for that if they're not present by a definite certain age, that it kind of gives off a little bit of a red flag that we need to do further evaluation or we need to do some more investigation. Um, and so there are certain things that, um, that we look for and that we have you look for. Um, and milestones are a way to give general guidance to know what comes next too. So even on the CDC website that we're gonna go through, um, they actually have milestones for each age group. And then they even have what milestones are coming or what, which ones are or going to emerge so that you prepare yourself. Um, you know, a lot of times I see parents in the office and I kind of let them know when a good time would be to start childproofing your home. If you have a six month old that's kind of stationary, they're gonna start moving around between six to nine months. So that's the time where we recommend to really just go around your home and start childproofing it and making sure that they are safe and sound when they start exploring and doing all the normal things that they're gonna be doing. 
So who tracks development? And really, um, this is also guidance by um, the CDC and the AAP. Um, essentially, you, the parent and caregivers, want to be kind of doing the monitoring day to day. They, you want to be um, watching your child and seeing what what they're doing, um, how are they doing it. There are specific things that um, you know that that are are looked for, but um, you know the day to day monitoring is is the parents and and um, caregivers. Um, there are some screenings that we do um, at the office. Uh, we start actually kind of looking at development right at the first visit, second visit, the birth, and the month. And um, we really do go over while we're doing the regular examination of your um, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, and heart, and lungs, and belly. We also are looking at the tone of the infant. We're looking at whether they're making eye contact with us. So those are all things that we kind of check for also. Um, and then at 9, 18, um, 24, and 30 months, we do like a specific screening where we ask you specific, specific questions and things that are, that should be there at that time. And that kind of gives off like certain red flags if um, those criteria are not met. But again, we really rely on the parent um, to let us know um, if they're concerned about anything. And then there's evaluation. So the, this evaluation occurs when there's um, delays or that the screening um, resulted or even the monitoring resulted in some, um, in, a, in a slight um, delay or, or there was something of a concern that, that we picked up or the parent picked up. So then we send for development evaluation and that's by, done by developmental pediatrician, child psychologist. There's also early intervention and school programs that do a more in-depth evaluation completely. So the skills that we're looking at when we do a full developmental screening or um, and even as a as a parent, what you're what you're monitoring comes into like three, you know, four to five categories. So uh, there's gross motor skills, uh, fine motor skills, language skills cognitive skills and social skills. So these are all the, all the different categories of the skills that we're looking for. So gross motor is the large muscle group. So sitting, standing, walking, uh, running, and then climbing, jumping, and then for the younger, um, changing positions, uh, rolling. So these are all things that you're using your gross motor skills. Um, when just in general for child development, we develop as infants um, and as we're growing, we, we strengthen our body from our head down to our toes. So that's why when you kind of look at um, different development by the ages, and I am going to go through um, that a little bit, um, we develop first from our head. That's why our neck is like very, um, a little bit not as secure when you're first born. And we always have you hold the baby's neck as much as possible. And then it starts strengthening. So your baby's neck starts to strengthen. Upper shoulders start to strengthen by about three to four months. Um, the, the lower abdomen starts to strengthen and then your legs. So it kind of develops from head to toe. And then it goes um, inside to outside. So our hands, um, our shoulders, inner, inner arms, develop a little bit earlier than the outside of our hands. But we, we know how to, and babies know how to bring things central. So that is another, um, uh, another part of the milestones too. So in bringing your hands to the center. Fine motor skills are, you know, um, your fine, your, your ability to button, dress, eat, um, hold a fork, hold a spoon, um, draw, and um, drawing shapes and things like that. Language, huge um, skill that we start looking at. We start even looking at um, babies cooing, uh, smiling. These are all early, early communication that we see going on. Um, and then the cognitive skills, so thinking skills, understanding, reasoning, remembering, things like playing peekaboo is a cognitive skill, right? So you have something hidden or you're, you know, hiding yourself and you say peekaboo, which is so fun in the office for me anyway. Um, and then the social skills. So that's also something that's very important that we can determine if things are going well um, with your child. So how they're interacting with others. Are they having good relationships with family and friends? Are they um, do they recognize um, family members versus non-family members? So that's also part of their development. Um, and, you know, how they interact with um, each other, um, siblings and things like that. 
So we're going to go through um, the uh, milestones and um, we're going to go through um, each one. And I just wanted to also say that these were all, um, I got a lot of this information from the cdc.gov um, website, which we'll have at the end, and also the American Academy of Pediatrics website called healthychildren.org has a lot of information. And so I just kind of picked and choose like what major ones, but I do, if you are concerned, obviously talk to your pediatrician, but there are so many resources. Um, there's even a milestone tracker app that the CDC has that you can download on your phone. Really great, great tool for you to use. Um, at home uh, with your, you know, you kind of look at it and it goes through like specific things that you can be looking for and then what you can do in anticipation of the next um, age group and um, what the best ways are to um, interact with your child. So at the one month mark, um, we look for um, eye contact. We really want to see eye contact at that time. And um, uh, and then the baby usually tends to keep hands in um, tight fists. Um, and when they're rolled over on the stomach, they um, they definitely can um, lift up their head a little bit or turn side to side, not all the way, but they can turn um, side to side, which is uh, really important. Um, they can focus, uh, and I, I get this question a lot from parents, but how far can they see? So um, they can look at six to 12 inches, which is pretty amazing. Um, essentially, when you're holding your child on the crook of your arm, they can see your face. So I always find that fascinating, like six to 12 inches right away. They're um, really looking at your face and they love faces at this age. Um, and so it's a really nice time. That's a best way to bond with your with your baby. So things that we we get concerned about. So every slide I'm going to try to go through just some like major milestones. Of course, there's like many many more that you can look for. I didn't want to list like all of them because I find that it is easy for one to look for them online. Um, and also, if you go to the um, Milestone Tracker website, they have a complete complete great list. So I didn't want to just kind of copy paste all that. But I do want to just mention that there are specific concerns if things aren't happening by a certain age, that that's definitely something that you want to tell your pediatrician or get help for. And um, there are so many resources and, um, and your pediatrician or your, or your healthcare provider should be able to guide you and let you know what to do. And a lot of times the reason why we're looking right now, or we're just kind of look following this closely is if you, um, if you intervene early, it helps to close the gap early. So um, if your baby at one month is feeding slowly or not having a strong suck, by one month they really should have a really strong suck. They should be feeding pretty, pretty rapidly. Um, if they seem stiff, so this is something that I do check for, if their tone, so if they kind of seem like not as, you know, when they're first born, sometimes they can be a little bit stiff, they're swollen a little bit, um, so they're not moving around as much, they're kind of staying in the one spot, but then they should be kind of like able to be very mobile, but not to the, ex not excessively loose. So it's kind of like their tone, and that's what we check for when you come in for your one month visit, how, um, and, 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 you know, sometimes this can be a little bit difficult to tell, but they shouldn't be completely floppy. So they shouldn't be completely like without tone. When you kind of lift them a little bit, they should have like a little bit of resistance. Um, and if your baby doesn't respond to loud sounds. So hearing is something that can be developed and we do at birth now, we do a hearing screen right at the hospital, um, which does kind of pick up a lot of, um, a lot of hearing delays in it, if it hasn't been picked up yet. But um, they, if they don't respond to loud sounds, so they should have that reflexive kind of um, shutter uh, to loud sounds. I'm not recommending that you do that un constantly, but just, you know, if there's a loud sound and they kind of like flex a little bit, that would be normal. Um, at two months, um, which is the next time you visit your pediatrician, so these are also tied into when your pediatric visits are in the first um, five years because there's a lot of things that happen. Um, and that is one of the reasons why you're coming in so often, especially in the first year. 
So there's a social smile that happens. Um, it can happen as early as one month, but we want to see it by two months, definitely. And that means that your baby smiles right at you while looking at you. So good eye contact, baby looks at you, you smile, baby smiles back. Um, it's the best feeling. And um, that is something that we do look for in the office. Sometimes they smile at me and sometimes they don't. Actually, believe it or not, with my mask and my visor on, they still smile. So it's amazing. Um, there should be brief periods of calm um, at two months, like the baby shouldn't just be waking up, sleeping, feeding, a big waking up, feeding, and then sleeping. It, there should be some periods where they're awake and alert, but they're calm. Um, they look around for their parents and they're starting to coo. Um, they're turning their heads towards sound. They stare at faces and then they begin to ask Fussy if they're in the same spot all the time. So I'm sure um, everyone has gone through this with their children that they're kind of doing the one thing for a long time. My example to parents is always like tummy time. It's really important to do tummy time because that really what's exercising our neck muscle and our upper um, shoulder muscles. But if they um, if they're um, uh, if they don't like it for long periods of time, they're not going to be happy. So you got to look at those cues and they start, you know, getting a little bit cranky, fussy if they're in one position for a prolonged period of time. So I'm talking like even a minute, two minutes, they can get bored and they don't, you know, want to be there anymore. Some concerns, again, um, if they're missing milestones, uh, if there's no response to any loud noises, so, you know, that's any time that you see that. Um, if they're not smiling, or if they can't hold their head up at all when they're on their stomach. Um, and also if they're not putting their hands in their mouth. So they are starting to really like, and that's what that central thing I was talking about where they bring either one or both hands. And that's also a developmental, that's also um, telling us that our brain is like communicating, each side is communicating. So if they're not bringing their hands or at least one hand to the mouth, that means, you know, that's a that's a good sign when the hand comes to the mouth. So if that's not happening, that is something to talk to your provider about. At four months, so that's the next time that you come in, um, some of the major milestones are they're smiling spontaneously now. Um, they like to play. They definitely have um, certain likes and dislikes. They have preferences. They begin to babble a little bit and they have different cries for different needs. Um, they can also start reaching, so that's really important. Um, the reaching, and we're going to go over that too, the, the reaching, the grasp, um, and there's different like fine motor kind of things that start happening with the grasp too. Um, and, it's, um, and they can hold their head very steady. They shouldn't be any neck issues now. At four months, they really should be good, sturdy with their head. They should be able to like sit up and um, be nice and stable with their neck. They may start rolling. Um, so this milestone is interesting. We used to expect them to be rolling um, from stomach to back by about four months, but now we give it a little bit longer because um, they're sleeping on their back now. So they're really not getting as much tummy time as before. So the tummy time is really what helps um, babies to learn how to use those muscles to roll over. So what they do is they push up and then they kind of push back and it kind of brings them around. And so they roll from stomach to back first, and then they get enough um, strength and momentum to go from the back to the stomach. But the rolling from the stomach to the back can start about four months. And they should be pushing up to their elbows when they're on their stomach. Just want to make sure I have some notes on the side too. I just want to make sure that I get everything. Um, and uh, again, yes, they should hold their head steady. They're really watching faces. So they smile and then you smile sometimes. Um, they're kind of interacting with you and it's amazing. Some of the concerns. So again, each, time, each of the concerns, you really wanna speak to your doctor. So if they're missing any milestones, um, that's something to talk about. Or if they don't smile, they're not holding their head steady, like they're still kind of a little bit floppy. If they're not making any sounds or they don't bring things to their mouth. So at four months also, the big thing that's going on is the teething starts. So you start to see drooling, you start to see teething. So they're gonna, because of that, they're uncomfortable, but they know how to bring things into their mouth. So, um, and also your mouth is a very large sensory, um, it, it, the babies get a lot of sensory information from their mouth. Um, so if they're not doing that at four months, that is a concern. 
six months. Um, six months is a fun age because they still like us when they come from the doctor. So they're um, beginning to know if someone is a stranger, but they still like to come and they still enjoy um, being there. They know faces. They like to play with others, especially their parents. They're rolling over both directions now. At six months, I'm usually expecting this. So if this is not happening at six months, I try to assess whether there's some delay in um, and maybe they're not getting enough tummy time. Sometimes if it's a second or third sibling and there's just other kids running around, it's hard to put your little baby in the floor in those, uh, in those situations and you're kind of always carrying them. And so they might roll over a little bit later. So if everything else is checking off and it's one thing that's not, then we try to work on it. But again, they should really be rolling over both directions, sitting with support. They should be supporting their weight on their legs. So when you're kind of holding them, they're kind of bouncing. That's like the best I see. I like to do that in the office with the babies. Um, they begin saying vowel sounds and they begin transferring from one hand to the other. This is also like a major, major milestone that we all ask for and ask about. Um, so some concerns again, missing any milestones. Um, if they don't try to get things in reach, if they try to, if you're kind of playing, they're sitting or they're on their stomach, if there's just something there and they're really not grabbing for it or trying to get it, I mean, um, obviously if it's not something to interest them, they might not, but if it's like some like kind of colorful object, they should really try to grab it. Uh, if there's no like kind of response to caregivers, like if they don't smile when they see them or they don't really like get excited or get upset, either way, if there's really no response to caregivers, it is a little bit of a concern because at six months they should be having that really socialized interaction. Um, they're having difficulty getting things in the mouth um, and they're not making any sound. So they're not cooing, they're not making any vowel sounds like um, uh, that, you know, the, the early sounds that they, they start making. And they're not la if they're not laughing or squealing, because this is a very important milestone. These are all things that tell us that they're emotional and, um, and social and social well-being might be affected. So this is something that you do want to talk to your pediatrician about. And then again, with the um, stiffness or um, or being floppy. So if there's tight muscles, like increased tone, or there's like a little bit of decreased tone, they're not they're not like strengthened or strong. That is a concern as well. Um, the next time you come in is at nine months. So the nine month mark, um, they don't like us anymore. They're completely have uh, stranger anxiety, which is very, very common. They're sitting, I usually examine the babies on mom's lap or dad's lap, whoever comes in because they are just are much, much better. Um, they're much um, calmer when they're on your lap. If they're, if they're sitting separate on the table, they do get scared and they don't like when we kind of approach with all our um, gadgets. So our otoscope and ophthalmoscope and the stethoscope, like they kind of, they don't like it. Um, it does help at this age, actually, if you wanted to get like a um, doctor kit or something like that, that would be helpful. Um, they're clingy with familiar adults. Um, they do have favorite toys. They have a preference for certain things, toys or books. They make a lot of different sounds and they're copying, 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 and they can play peekaboo because they're getting object permanent. So if you have something in your hand and you hide it, they will look for it. Um, they can move things smoothly from one hand to another. So their hand-eye coordination is really getting great. Um, they pick up things with the um, thumb and forefinger. This is very, very important. So this is a very great fine motor skill. It's called the pincer grass. Um, this also comes in handy when they start to learn to self-feed but they should be able to pick up that cheerio and put it in their mouth and then they can pull to stand with help so if you kind of hold them um you know they should be able to pull to stand and so some of the concerns if they're missing any of the milestones if they don't bear any weight so if you're standing and they don't really if you're trying to have them stand and they're not able to stand um if they don't sit with support so if by nine months they're not sitting um with support so that means like they're sitting up and kind of hold being forward that's that's okay, but if they can't do that, that's um, that's something that you should um, talk to your physician about. They don't respond with your own, with their own name, so at this point, they should be kind of responsive to um, you know if, if you if you call them, they should turn, they should smile, they should kind of look around, and if they're not transferring from one hand to another, so you know we give a range. So usually this this um, starts at around six months, but if they don't have it by nine months then it is something of a concern. So transferring is important. 
So um, at the one year mark or 12 to 15 months, um, they start getting a little bit shy. They're nervous with new people or strangers. They do notice when you leave. So when mom or dad leaves, they do cry or they get upset. Um, they respond to simple spoken requests. So the receptive language we call it is should be kind of, um, they should be understanding simple, um, simple things like, oh, we're going to eat now. We're gonna go outside. They should understand that, you know, that's what we're about to do um they make sounds with like intonation so we say they're babbling but they're going blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so they're having like they're almost having a whole conversation and they're expecting you to understand but you may not understand any of it but they should have those intonations happening um they're saying a few words and they can get into a sitting position without help so if they're lying down um or they're uh, and then they can pull, push up and then get into a sitting position. And then they can start standing alone, taking a few steps. Sometimes they start walking at 12 months. We really want them to be walking by latest 18 months. So that's why we kind of put it in the range. Sometimes they can start walking early, like even nine, 10 months, um, they can start walking. So um, it's a range. So um, again, the concerns, any missing milestones, if they can't stand with support, um, if they don't search for things, after you hide them so when you kind of like put it away or you're trying to like interact with them they're really not interested or they're kind of like not searching for it i mean obviously these things if they happen once you can try again but if they kind of continually happen or it seems to be a pattern you do want to ask about it when you go to your pediatrician's office um doesn't point so yeah 12 to 15 months we really want to see pointing we want to see nonverbal communication um, so this is a very important skill that um, if they don't have we want to know and if they're losing skills so if there's a there's um let's say they babble they've been babbling and then all of a sudden they stop babbling or they stop saying the words that they used to say this is something that we need to know um, and at 15 months if they're not saying words like mama and dada um, it doesn't have to identify that person but they should be saying those words and if they're not saying it that is cause for a concern you do want to talk to some, um, your provider at 18 months so they're starting to really like um, you know they're 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 really developing now. Um, they like to hand things to others to play. They're playing. They like to play. Um, they like to interact and they may have temper tantrums because they kind of know what they want and they know what they don't want and they don't understand why you're saying no to something. Um, they may be afraid of others. They show affection to familiar people. They play simple pretend um, games or stories or with dolls and things like that or with something that they're playing with, cars, trucks, they say several different words and they should be walking at 18 months and then they can follow one step command. So, um, oh, can you please get your shoes? Where's your jacket? They should be understanding that a little bit. Um, the concerns again, missing milestones. If they don't point, they're not walking. There's no new words. So their language is really developing right now. They're like a language explosion, we call it. So single words, but really too many to count. Um, there's no new words that would be concerning um, that they don't have at least six words by 18 months. So that's really the bare, bare minimum. Um, usually at 18 months, if I hear that they're not speaking that much, um, then I do have them be evaluated. And even earlier, and that's one of the things, um, if there's a concern, that's usually what we, have, what we um, recommend. And if they're losing skills, so again, if they have a skill and they don't know if they don't want, have it any longer, that's definitely a concern. So, um, and then also that they don't really notice that the parent or caregiver uh, left the room. So if they are, um, they kind of are in tune. They're supposed to be in tune with where you are. If they're playing in a, in a certain area, they kind of keep checking back to see where you are. So that's really important as far as development. At two, um, the best age is two, I think. Um, I like all age groups, but the best ages too. That's really when their their brain is just developing so rapidly. And um, I don't like calling it terrible twos, actually. I like to call it inquisitive, curious, uh, strong-willed um, twos. So they, they're copying others. They're getting excited with other children. They are doing parallel play. So they're playing alongside of someone, but they're becoming much more independent. Um, they're showing like that, you know, ways that they want to do things they're showing defiant behavior um and uh they can stand on their tiptoes they can build a tower of four or more blocks um they're talking they should be saying two word sentences 
So some concerns would be missing any of the milestones, if they're losing skills. So again, if they were doing something and they're not doing it any longer, they're not copying actions or words. So a lot of times two-year-olds, whoa, they're watching you. So they're gonna do everything that you do. Um, and they're gonna talk like you and they're gonna walk like you and they're gonna hold your phone. I remember when my kids were little, they would just hold the phone and they would say stuff like, okay, um, take some Tylenol. I mean, you know, when I would be on call and things like that. So um, they tend to copy you. So now's the time, even a little bit before this, you wanna be careful what you say at home because they're definitely listening. And they, if they're not using two word sentences, they're not walking steadily or not walking properly. This is also something that you do wanna uh, make sure you let your provider know. And three to four years, they're becoming much more creative. They're liking to play with other children. They're cooperating with other children. This is really where they learn to share. So two-year-olds are not known for their sharing. It's their world and we're in it. At between three and four is when those skills kind of start emerging. So they're cooperating with other children. They may be taking turns. They tell stories. They should know their first and last name. Um, they can hop. They can stand with one foot. Um, and cutting and pasting, um, coloring, they should know their colors and numbers at this point. Um, and some concerns would be if they can't jump in place. So by three, really by two, two and a half, they should be jumping. If by three to three, three and a half, they're not jumping, this is, a, this is um, somewhat of a issue. I always have the kids jump in the office. If they're having trouble scribbling or they can't follow three-step commands, so they're really like having trouble remembering or, or following and if they're not speaking correctly. So the speaking, um, they should be, it might not be completely articulate. There could be a little bit of inner, um, little bit of um, issues with speech, but really for the most part, 75% of the speech should be understood by an outside person at this age. And four to five. So um, really at this age, they're really, their personality has really been emerging. They want to please friends. They want to um, they like they want to be like their friends. They like to sing, dance, act, play. They speak very clearly. They tell simple stories. They can say their name and address, um, and they can count. Uh, they can copy a triangle. They can hop. So they're really just doing a lot of different things. Um, the concerns would be if they're not showing any emotion at all. Um, they're having extreme behavior. Uh, they're withdrawn or not active. And of course, losing the skills they once had would be a huge concern. So um, again, these, this is um, cdc.gov slash act early. And this is a phone number that um, you can call if you want to take a screenshot. Um, I'll be having all the references at the end too. I'm sure you can play it too. So some of the risk factors for developmental, so that was kind of like an overview of what we kind of look for birth to five, but some of the risks for developmental issues could be prematurity or if they have low birth weight, if there's certain environmental exposures early on, um, or if there's long lasting chronic health issues, um, cardiac, if there's, um, you know, uh, uh, if there are some patients that have had um, heart surgery as infants, and or if they've had um, any other type of issues or in the NICU, in the neonatal intensive care unit for a prolonged period of time, this can cause some developmental delays and they are screened pretty regularly and we try to refer them um, earlier rather than later and we found that that really does help improve um, their development. So what to do if the developmental milestones are, are delayed? So let's say you kind of, um, your pediatrician mentions that yes, some of these milestones are delayed. Do not despair, don't get worried. I mean, you do are gonna need to do some further testings and screenings, but this, um, some of the testing is, is, is something that, um, you know, may, may turn out okay. So there's something called um, every county, so Suffolk County has early intervention and their services from birth to three, year old, three years old. And you know what, you don't even need a special specific referral from your doctor to get evaluated. You can call yourself to early intervention and get an evaluation without even talking to your doctor. I mean, you should, because it's important that we know also, but you can do that. So you don't have to wait to be seen. If you're really concerned about something, you can pick up the phone and call them and they will come and evaluate them. Um, for children three and older, special education services may be needed through your local school district. So you would contact your local school district and have them evaluate and they would do the same type of screening protocol. So these are just some of the references that I, um, 
got some of the information from, and there's some websites here, but this is the, the developmental milestone tracker app is amazing. And that you can download onto your phone and you can really look at every single milestone. Um, it breaks it down in different categories, social, emotional, language, communication, cognitive, and movement. And it also tells you what you should be concerned about. And then also it tells you what you can do to, to be prepared for the next milestone that's coming. Um, HealthyChildren.org, great website by the American Academy of Pediatrics, and they have developmental milestones by age also. Um, they've also been working together with the CDC. And um, they also have plenty of other information on all things children. So um, sometimes that's a good resource to have that I give to all my parents. Milestones in Action is a free library of videos showing developmental milestones. Um, this is the big campaign that the CDC was doing. It's called Learn the Signs, Act Early. There's also um, Birth to Five, Watch Me Thrive, and then Bright Futures. Um, these are also materials for families. These are all things that can be found um, in many, many, um, many different things can be found here, and it's, and it's all free. Um, all right, that about ends my presentation. I hope you got some benefit and some information about it. Um, I hope we're successful in sharing this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave, leave it below and I'll try to answer them. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't do it live tonight, but I will be back next month. And again, if you have any other concerns or questions, please let me know. Um, and then keep in touch with your doctor too, it's really important. Okay, I hope everybody has a great evening. I hope you're staying safe and well. Remember to continue to wash your hands, stay distant, wear your masks, and have a great day. All right, thank you. Let me see if I can turn off this. Um, let's see first I'll stop the share, this screen sharing and I'll